Hey, what is up guys? It's Sand here back with another video. In this one, we're gonna be taking a look at the brand new released Asus X670E Extreme motherboard I've got right here. This is just about as good as it gets when it comes to motherboards. And this is for the brand new AM5 platform. So we're gonna be doing an unboxing, taking a look at the motherboard, and then we'll do a quick comparison with the previous Crosshair 8 Extreme motherboard, just a side by side, uh, you know, as a first look. So let's get into it. Before you go and dislike this video and comment how this motherboard is so overpriced and that it's not worth buying and no one should be buying it, listen, I get it. I'm not saying that you should or shouldn't buy it. In fact, most people will probably be better served with the ROG uh, Crosshair Hero board. In fact, you probably wouldn't even be able to tell the difference between the Extreme and the Hero board in day-to-day -day usage. However, this is super use of stand here. So uh, I have a little history with the Asus Extreme boards. In fact, I've been using Extreme boards all the way back to the Sandy Bridge. You know, I've had Maximus Extremes, I've had Rampage Extremes, um, Zenith Extreme with Threadripper, and with the last 5950X build, the Crosshair 8 Extreme. So that said here, uh, I have a thing for overbuilt, overpriced Extreme motherboards. Now with that out of the way, let's take a look at the unboxing. You know, nowadays if you've unboxed a Asus motherboard in the last handful of years, especially an ROG motherboard, it's pretty standard. This thing flips open. Inside you get the motherboard and its own little cardboard tray. You can lift that tray out with the motherboard and below that, you have all of the auxiliary or accessories that come with this motherboard. Now this Crosshair Extreme motherboard doesn't come with all of the useless, well, I say useless, but gimmicky accessories that we used to get with previous Extreme motherboards, like the five and a quarter bay attachment for, for overclocking and, and whatever, those kind of things. Uh, you pretty much get the bare minimum useful stuff. You have a daughter board attachment for your M.2s, they used to call these DIM 2s, I guess they call these Gen Z.2 now. They've got a smaller interface and it's actually a pretty beefy, chunky uh, piece of aluminum with a heat pipe. Um, they seem to have beefed up the cooling on this and you can even see there's heat fins or heat sink fins on this little attachment. It's actually pretty heavy too, so that's pretty nice. If you were to install M.2s, into your motherboard. You can have two on the motherboard and two on this attachment. So you have a total of four. So that's nice with the extreme boards. You also are given a fan controller, a um, little fan controller with one, two, three fans, six fans, and then you got one, two, three, four, five, six, R8 addressable RGB headers. So this is the ROG fan controller. I'm not sure what the name is, but you can plug this directly into your motherboard and uh, power all your fans off of this one device. So that's that's kind of cool, that's kind of nice, uh, especially with all of your RGB and whatever, being having additional headers, that's a plus. You also have a USB for your drivers and a little screwdriver for installation. Moving on to the next compartment here, we've got a Wi-Fi antenna, this is a Wi-Fi 6E antenna. It's magnetized, so you can stick this to your steel case. If you have an aluminum case, however, like the case lab case that you see right behind me over there, then you're kind of SOL. You have to use some kind of adhesive to stick that onto your case if you want to use this antenna. In the small compartment here, you have a bunch of little bag get bags uh, and little nicks and knacks. This right here, this is the ROG True Voltican. Um, I want to say this is a voltage monitor um, with a USB connection. Uh, don't quote me on that. that I, I need to take a look at the, what the website says about this, but that's what I want to say. This is, this is what that's for. Next, you have the GPU anti-sag mount. Uh, it's got a little magnet in there and it's meant to prop up your GPU. You've probably seen this. Um, before in, in other builds or other motherboards or graphics cards. Uh, let's see, other stuff, you got some temperature probes, you have a piece of um, whatever for your M.2, your thermal pads, 
and then you've got some cables for addressable RGB extensions. Just a bunch of stuff that you would expect if you're paying $1,000 for a motherboard. And then last but not least, in this last compartment here, you have the rest of your SATA cables. And then you have the manual. And your manual, and usually you're gonna get a couple stickers. Yep, there's your stickers. And then your manual that you can always download online to get the latest version. So uh, you know, having physical copies is nice, but always get the drivers and always get the manuals from the website. This is the actual motherboard. And as you can see, this is an EATX form factor. Uh, EATX just means that it's a little bit bigger on this side than regular ATX. So make sure that if you're big, getting a case that it will fit this motherboard. Now, this isn't full EATX, full, full EATX is, I want to say slightly bigger than this, but usually what ASUS does is they call it an EATX, but then it's just a little bit extra that hangs off the side. So if you have a, let's say an O11 Dynamic, this will hang off the side of your motherboard tray area, but it's already designed for that, so it's not a problem. The main difference, uh, the reason why you have this extra space is for, again, this right here, this is the uh, DIM.2, actually no, they call it the Gen Z.2 now. This is this form factor of a uh, memory, memory slot that it slots in just right here. And it, it feels like the way it clips in is just like memory. And you can see it's quite a bit thicker than the previous iterations. They've got the fins and quite a, and even a heat pipe, as I mentioned. So it's quite a bit more beefy than before. Uh, you've got the memory that sits here and you got a good amount of clearance. And even though it's thicker, it's just sitting a little higher up and it's clearing, clearing this IO or this, this cable shield here. So that's, that's how they've arranged it. All right, starting from the top here, you can see we've got two EPS uh, connectors. These are eight pin, eight pin for your extreme overclocking. Really, uh, one pin is usually enough. Two pin is overkill, but then this whole motherboard is is overkill, right? Moving to your right here, you've got a bunch of a couple fans. You got a chassis fan, chassis fan, and gray, gray. I'm not sure if the gray is CPU or gray is pump, but. Uh, you do have, of course, you're going to have a CPU fan header and you're going to have a pump, 4-pin PWM pump header. Uh, so that might be it. Again, I haven't looked at the manual here. I'm just, just going by what I'm, I'm used to on Asus motherboards. Um, on the side here, you have a bunch of 90-degree connectors. So you have, let's see, what do you have? You got an ARGB connector. Uh, this is, let me go back here. This is a regular RGB connector. So this is four pins. This is a RGB, so three pins. Okay, this is the pump. This is the pump header and you got chassis fan. So the gray must be the CPU. Um, you got the pump power, 24 pin, your power PD power. This is three pin, six pin, sorry, six pin. You, I saw there was a six pin adapter in there. Um, that's where this would go. You got your three, Gen 3.2 by two, so this is this is the new connector for your front panel. You got another RGB six pin connector, so this is going to be your splitter from from what I saw. Um, th this is splitting splitting this connection to two, I think two RGB headers or con connections. That's I want to say that's a. I don't know if it's a proprietary thing, but this is the first time I've seen it on an ASUS motherboard. Moving to your left again, we got some USB uh, 3.2 Gen 1s, just as your regular USB 3 connections. And then um, RRD fan, RRD fan. I don't know, what what is RRD fan? Oh, rad fan, RAD fan. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Um, Okay, so sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm reading this, this backwards, and man, you should see this font. This looked like RRD to me. So uh, this is rad fan. I guess this is meant for your uh, fan fans, for, for your radiator. I guess the intent is for you to daisy chain. Again, don't quote me on that. Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure Asus will, the manual will tell you more about that. You got six SATAs, and then moving to the bottom here, 
All right, let's see what you got. You got your front panel connectors, your water flow sensor, another, your second pump and second radiator fan, and then your retry switch, your bio selector switch, and your safe boot switch. So these are nice. Uh, if you were to try to get, you need to get into your, your bios, you know, you can hit that and it just, it just gets you there. Another 3.2 Gen 2 USB internal headers, a couple USB 2 headers, and then down here, this is for your, your LN2, um, your slow mode, your voltage latch, um, you know, your, your, your stuff that really, this is what you're not getting on the hero boards that you're getting on this extreme board. Of course, 99% of the people who buy these boards aren't going to be touching this. So, so, you know, it is what it is, right? Uh, your, your, I want to say these are base clock. Uh, overclocking physical buttons for base clock adjustments um, and and that's that's about it so this piece right here this is metal so that that's nice and this is this is actually a heat sink you've got a single m.2 right here and then you got another m.2 here I've already installed my 980 pros in here this lights up I'm not actually a fan of the way this lights up but hey um, it goes RGB and, and just, I really prefer the old Crosshair 8 Extreme motherboard, the way this thing lighted up. Um, and, you know, side by side here. Can I zoom out? Yeah, there you go. I guess that's a perfect time to talk about the difference between the Crosshair 8 Extreme and then the Crosshair X670E or basically the Crosshair 9 Extreme. Just one one generational difference. You can see fundamentally and, and build wise, they're very, very similar. And you can see this is the older version of the DIM.2 versus the new version, the smaller version. You have generally small aesthetic changes, the way that the this is metal and this is metal, and now this is plastic and this is metal. This used to glow RGB, a smooth RGB light. And then you've got an old LED panel that, that changes, that indicates indicates uh, temperature, whatever you want to display here, but usually temperature, CPU temperature, or a CPU frequency, or whatever. Um, and then that's your multi-display panel. This right here on the old one lit up a little bit, but this, you got a bigger OLED display that lights up. Um, functionally, you can see very, very similar. And I want to say even even the way that this board was laid out and designed, the Crosshair 8 came very late in the cycle of the 5950X. It, it was almost the swan song of the AM4 platform because the 5950X came out and then it was almost like six months after this came out and then that was really right around X3D came out, right? 5800X3D. Um, and that, that's the retirement of AM4. I guess Asus was just really slow on the development cycle for this because of you know, COVID and everything. But th what I'm saying is they, they probably took all of this and just transferred it over to the AM5 uh, board. Because what I'm seeing here, the designs, uh, the way that it's laid out, it's, it's virtually identical or it's very similar in the d design language is, is right there. Um, what else? You have the Supreme FX sound, sound, sound with the, the divided board down here. Uh, you have a bunch of buttons here, which is nice. Your start and your read flex key, start flex key, your 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 QR code. Um, you know, to, to not not your QR code, but your your the LED for your numbers debug code. That's there. Take a quick look on the back side of the eight versus the nine here. You get the full back plate with the extreme logo. And then you have an RGB LED strip that goes along the edge right here. Very similar to the previous extreme board because the extreme board here, this one has uh, ROG, Republic of Gamers, back plate, or the shield. It's covering most of it except right here. And then you also have that LED strip that goes along the side. So, uh, you know, when you buy 
the extreme motherboard, that's pretty much you get what exactly what you expect um, in terms of build quality. It's very half very heavy of a board. And you know, you can you can see that that's why it costs a thousand dollars for this thing. It, it's 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 one of the probably one of the best built boards that you can buy for the AM5 platform. Uh, I was editing the video and I realized that I actually never touched upon the IO portion of this motherboard. So let's take a look at what we got on the back here. Um, wow, look at that. That's, that's really complete. You've got four USB Type-C connections. You got two USB Type-4s -S or USB 4s. And then you've got the rest is 10 gigabit per second USB 3.2 Gen 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then this one's also 10 gigabit. This one's a 20 gigabit. The one thing I do want to caution you about is that notice this is USB 40. So this is 40 gigabit USB 4. But this is not Thunderbolt. Notice that there's no Thunderbolt symbol right next to this. This is using the Thunderbolt controller, but Asus decided not to license Thunderbolt or just did not enable Thunderbolt for this. On the Intel counterparts, they're using the exact same controller, but you do get Thunderbolt. On um, the Crosshair 8, the previous Crosshair Extremes, and the cre previous Crosshair AM4 boards, you did have Thunderbolt. So, th so that's a missed opportunity. Um, that's very unfortunate that these are not Thunderbolt connectors. These are just USB 4 connectors. Below that, you have Wi-Fi 6E. And, uh, you know, that's pretty standard. You have an SPDIF out. And then you have 5.1 surround sound, so rear sub, line in, line out, mic in, but you can configure this for 5.1. Uh, BIOS flashback and clear CMOS, it's a nice to have on the rear I.O. But you can see, this is very complete. This is just about everything you want except for Thunderbolt. So that's a disappointment. But, but yeah, this is just a quick look at, at this as well. All right, now looking ahead, what to expect. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be taking this motherboard and throwing a 7950X with 16 core CPU into here and then throwing that into the main editing rig I've got over there, This the, the big one in the back that's kind of in pieces as you, you can see. Uh, I took out the Crosshair 8 and the 5950X motherboard from that PC, so that's what this is gonna be replacing. That's the editing PC, that's the workstation PC, so I'm gonna be having a 7950X and once the Vcache version of the 7950X comes out and we be throwing that in here, we'll do some comparison tests. So if you wanna see that, make sure to subscribe and look out for that video or the couple videos about you know, me putting that in there and, and doing those tests. So anyway, if you thought this video was useful or you liked what you saw, uh, go ahead and hit that like button. Again, not that dislike because, because, because of the price. Remember, we already got that out of the way. We, we said that, well, I'll just leave it at that. Anyway, as always, my name is Stan and I'll see you guys in the next one.